How's it going everyone, Tom here, and for today's video I wanted to take a look at some of the commercial build surfaces that you can use as a top layer for your bed to print onto. I mean, we all know that you can print onto glue stick, regular hairspray and blue tape, but what if you wanted something that's a bit more professional and repeatable? Well, let's have a look, shall we? So in total I tested six different print surfaces and they fall into two categories liquids and solids. On the liquid side we have three solutions that you can either brush or spray onto your bare bed surface, say aluminum or glass. In no particular order, those are 3 des a North American product that comes as a thick liquid that gets wiped onto your bed with a sponge and then dries to a semi-permanent layer. The Spanish 3D Lac, basically a brand new type of hairspray, and the yet unreleased Austrian Printafix Basic, another clear spray on coat but that one didn't do so particularly well so the manufacturer is actually delaying the launch to get it right. And for the solids I've also got three different types starting with the Coropad from Poland, a thin adhesive sheet that you could compare to something like Biltec. Then we've got the American Zebra Plate and the new Zebra Skin with the Zebra Plate actually being a standalone build surface that you could also clip onto an existing bed and the Zebra Skin with the same material but as a thinner sheet and some 3M adhesive on the back. And lastly the PEI coated aluminum plate which is still in the printer. Um, that one I got from Sven Krause from Germany again being a completely standalone bed and he even included a silicone heater with it. You can also get PEI as a sheet or film and stick that to your bed which is what the Loadspot Mini uses. So how does one test a bed surface somewhat objectively? Well my methods obviously included lots and lots and lots of test prints. Using the same set of g-codes I ran six different tests on each surface. I used what I think are the three most common plastics these days, ABS, PLA and PET. The ABS I used was some no name but decent ABS printed at 245 degrees, then white PLA from BQ which is also not super expensive filament but prints marvelously at 215 degrees and lastly as the PET of choice I used genuine Tolman tea glaze at 245 degrees which isn't the most challenging type of PET you could print but makes for a good sample of what you would typically use. And for each material I ran a print with and without a heated bed, which I mean for PLA and PET is still something you might want to do, especially on low-end printers that are lacking a heated bed, but honestly ABS onto a cold bed was just something I wanted to know if it was even possible in the slightest bit. The temperatures for the heated bed when it was used were 60 for PLA, 70 for T-glaze and 105 degrees for ABS. The ambient temperature around and inside the printer was at a controlled 18 degrees for each test and that was also the temperature I had the heated bed cool down to when I ran a cold test. And the printer I used was my usual Mendel 90 experimentation platform which is a total mess but works extremely consistently probably due to the fact that I know every nook and cranny of their printer by heart. It has a weight style extruder, an E3D V5, V6 bastard hardened, an inductive sensor to get that nozzle distance really consistent and it has no part cooling fan. So on to the print parameters and we should have all the constraints covered that make this test run scientifically reproducible, at least a bit. And the test part again was chosen to be challenging. It's a 100 millimeter long, 8 millimeter wide and 15 millimeter tall stick that has a pointy tip on one end and that is probably the worst shape you could torture any print surface with. Because it's so long it will create enormous forces as the plastic cools and the pointy tip tends to pop up first since the actual surface area it has to stick to the bed is smaller but it's still getting the full amount of forces from the center of the part. I printed these with a 0.25 millimeter layer height with the first layer bump to 0.4 millimeters and a 1.5 millimeter width to reduce the effects of any sort of misalignment uh, we create. Two shells, four solid layers on top and bottom, 20% hex infill printed at 60 millimeters a second, no brim, so you do still have some wiggle room if you have to make a material work with a particular surface. Okay, so how did these surfaces fare? The six different test prints I did for each surface turned out to be like a, a linear progression. Each surface handled PLA and PET onto a heated bed beautifully, 
Some struggled with ABS onto a heated bed, and some did horrible with a cold bed overall, but as soon as, for example, PET failed, ABS definitely wouldn't work. So let's make our way through the individual surfaces again, starting with 3D Ease, which is pretty easy to apply with that sponge, but if you forget to wash it afterwards, you will be left with a useless brick and will have to find a fresh sponge. 3D Ease is odorless, and if I had to guess what material this was, I'd say it's a polymer-filled PVA glue, but I'm probably wrong there. It leaves a film that is very robust and can be used for many prints without reapplying. It's easy to touch up and easy to remove with some warm water, as the entire film will completely turn to mush and you'll be able to scrape it off. Acetone or alcohol don't seem to attack the surface, so you can use those to clean it. So how did it perform? Definitely better with a heated bed than without one, as all surfaces did. All the heated prints turned out perfectly, but the cold PLA print already showed some warping and PET or ABS onto a cold bed failed completely. Moving on to 3D lac, which is applied by spraying it onto the bed. And that makes it easy to get a nice even layer on there. You do need to completely wet the surface, just a thin wisp of 3D lac won't do. Unfortunately, you do have to apply it outside of your printer with the bed removed, or you are going to end up with something like this. And it does smell like typical hairspray, even more so if you heat the bed. You do have to reapply it before every print. A freshly applied surface will work best, but removing a print will also tear off that spot of 3D lac from the bed. To completely remove it and start over, you can easily remove it with acetone. But I mean, for printing, it works amazingly well, especially for cold prints. The heated prints obviously all worked, but even the cold prints with PLA and PET were surprisingly good. Cold ABS still failed. And as a bonus, since the 3D lac actually comes off the bed, large prints will often just pop off when they cool down after you give them a slight tap. Now, moving on to the solid, starting with the Coro pad. And just to get it out of the way, this thing is an absolute adhesion beast. I did correct for the extra 0.3 millimeters of thickness the Coro pad adds, but everything just stuck to it incredibly well. Maybe even a bit too well. This surface is the only one I could see cold ABS printing happening with. Um, add a bit of a brim and maybe print the first layer a bit hotter and you could have some success getting compact ABS prints out with no heated bed. Cold PLA worked perfectly, cold PET showed some slight warp, but the really interesting tests are the heated prints. Because each of them says bonded on here, uh, my remark for how easy it was to remove them. The PET print even stuck so well that it broke in half when I tried to remove it and it took a sizable chunk of the coral pad along with it. So maybe reduce the heated bed temperature even more if you're planning on using it or just use it cold. The coral pad in general also isn't the most robust surface as it easily gets kinks and tears from removing stuck prints, especially since the adhesive on its back isn't particularly strong, probably to make replacing it easier. But then again, it is the surface that I got absolutely the most adhesion out of in the widest range of situations. Next up, the zebras. I tested the zebra skin, which uses the same material on the surface as the zebra plate, but is a good bit thinner since it doesn't have to hold its own weight and it's going to stick to your build platform with the permanent 3M468 tape on its back. There is one disadvantage of using the zebra skin over the zebra plate though, and that's the fact that it's incompatible with the standard 4mm sensing distance inductive probes as used, for example, on the printer bot and a lot of other printers. It's just thick enough so that the sensor won't trigger, which in my case had the printer shoving the hot end into the zebra skin. The zebra plate has a few copper layers inside which spread the warmth from the heated bed and also allow the probe to trigger. It is a relatively sensitive surface that will melt when the hot end comes in contact with it and I've routinely found the piece of paper I used to set the nozzle distance tacked to the zebra skin in that spot. However, it is thick enough to allow for some sanding should you ruin the top layer. Adhesion was good for all materials as long as the surface was heated. Since the zebra skin and plate have a significant thickness, you're also going to see a significant temperature drop from what you're reading out of the heated bed to what you're actually getting on the surface. The cold prints for PLA and PET showed a very slight amount of warp, but were successful overall, while ABS onto a cold surface looks like it might work with a higher hot end temperature and a bit of a brim. 
And lastly, PEI. It's actually quite hard to tell that this bed is coated with a layer of PEI, which is chemically somewhat similar to Captain. It's a pretty hard surface coating when cold, but it does get quite squeaky sticky once it's heated. For the testing I did for this video, as well as with the printing I've done on the Loadspot Mini, I can say that PEI is an extremely robust coating and isn't going to show any sign of wear in any time soon, even if you're heavily using it. Sven Krause, the guy who made this PEI coated bed, calls it a permanent printing plate for that exact reason. By the way, that is the same guy who sent me this insane water-cooled hot and, and Unlike that last one, this one is definitely going to work. Since the PEI coated bed for me is the entire bed setup, minus the undercarriage, he also included a beefy enough 200 watt silicone heater for this 16 centimeter bed. And the PEI works amazingly well as long as it's heated. It's completely useless when cold and then won't even print PLA at all, but once it gets the temperature bump, it works beautifully with ABS and PLA and had the prints sitting completely loose once cooled down. And while PET is supposed to work with a heated PEI platform, I couldn't get it to stick at all. So do we have a winner that's like the best surface? Well, no, not because they all suck, but because they're all good for their own specific use cases. Pick the one that fits you best and keep in mind that none of these surfaces can do any sort of magic and bend the laws of physics. If you try to print in a cold basement room, especially with an unheated bed, you're going to get less adhesion than when you're propping up your printer right next to the fireplace, which I wouldn't recommend by the way, and add a beefy heated bed. Uh, you can increase the adhesion with any of these surfaces by moving the nozzle closer to the bed, increasing the hardened temperature for the first layer, or using a raft or a brim. So I hope this comparison was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below this video if I should do the same thing for the materials that weren't originally intended as a print surface, like the common blue painter's tape. Some also say brown packaging tape works well for some materials, but I'm not so sure about that. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.